Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays, and today we're playing some more Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2, and taking a look at the things that were going on in the last stream. And the first thing I want to take a look at over here is going to be on Bigrid. Bigrid is, as I'm sure you can probably remember, the planet where all of the Vitamelange comes from. And so Mark's got this big system over here set up. It's churning through the, all of the uh, all of the Vitamelange inputs, crushing it, crunching it down, processing it through. And in this case, it's kicking out lots and lots of the uh, Vitamelange extract. And that's dribbling out slowly along these bugs. Actually, this one's running fairly quickly. Um, but as it is, we've got the amount in this warehouse seems to be it seems to be holding pretty steady so that's a good sign and last week i had a look at this and i, I, I discovered it was all being sunk into making vitalic acid but the vitalic acid was virtually full now it has completely filled up and we've also filled up comp uh, as far as we're going to apparently um, yeah. i think there might be a missing uh, loader here because it looks like this should be filling this warehouse up over here i'm not quite sure what's happened but i'll put this on this on the list for a uh, mark to take a look at but i strongly imagine that over here there is supposed to be a loader in here doing that uh, and that will then load, dump all the stuff off here and put it into the in, into this warehouse here to get to uh, to to allow it to then be passed off over to the spaceship to be taken away. So, I imagine what's happened here is that this belt has been dragged through, and Factorio has done that thing where it turns a a, 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 a belt a loader into a belt when you drag across it, and it, it's just it's just a little bit broken. Um, but yeah, that's definitely not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> anyway, that then means we've got all of this uh, refined vi uh, vitamelange coming up here, which is allowing us to make more of the vitamelange extract reagent reagent that one because we are getting through huge quantities of this when we do. Doing the uh, lots of the uh, later processing things. So, so the Naquium processing, for example, requires a lot of this. A lot of the uh, biological science requires huge amounts of this. So a lot, we need a lot of the Vitalic reagent. And so, yeah, we've got a healthy stream of it coming along here. I um, will have to look at the numbers to find out whether this is actually okay or not. But it does seem to be. It's running nicely. It's passing it along here, and then it's putting it into the into the EQ to go into the spaceship. And well, at the moment we're not satisfied. We are still passing it straight through to go into the spaceship and, and uh, ship it off to uh, ship it off to Norvis and Norbit to then be passed on to wherever it's needed. But none of this is actually why I'm here. The reason I've come out to this planet to have a look at things that have been changed is because Mark has upgraded the um, or has fixed, perhaps I should say, the supply of the Vitamelange core fragments. So previously we had these coming in from I think maybe one mine, and maybe they've been coming in from a sort of, and then we had some Vitamelange coming in from a normal mine as well. Is that what this is doing? Uh, looks like it. Yes. So this is coming in here. This is being, this is processing normal Vitamelange into Vita products, which can then be passed out up here to be used elsewhere. But he's also massively boosted the amount that's being made from the core fragments. And if we look out on the map for you, you can see lots of these belts snaking out to distant core seams. So we're producing, we're pulling in large quantities of core chunks from many, many. I, I was going to say all of the core seams on the planet. It looks like, given there's one all the way down here on the south coast, south pole, south whatever you want to call this, uh, given that this one's running, I think it's quite likely that Mark has gone out and got all, absolutely all of them. And so all of that is then flooding in, and it's coming in on these belts here, and it's all going into this single warehouse in the middle. And that's doing the sort of the, it's using a warehouse as a balancer, which I, is, is, is a slightly dirty way to do things, but to be honest, I think it's probably good enough. So we've got various belts of it flowing in here. We've got one flowing out this way, and this one goes over to the spaceship because you need uh, core chunks for one of the biological sciences, and then all the rest of it is coming down these belts over here and being fed into various various crushermatrons in order to be processed through, in order to get us all of that vitamin and you saw coming out earlier. Uh, and that's all, that's all coming up to here, along with a certain amount that's being produced from the uh, from, from the actual mines as well. Because if we look out, if we look a little bit further out, you can see, yes, there are some mines like this one that are digging up a bit more as well, and then belts bring those in, just to make sure that we always have enough to keep the system happy and, and running at the speed that it wishes to become accustomed to. There have been some other tweaks as well, so somewhere on the output there is a load of, yeah, coming out of here, you can see there's a load of, a load of stone coming out here that's being passed up along the, along the disposal belt, and Marcus put in a system somewhere along here, yes, here we go, to pull, oh no, it's pulling the core chunks out there, and then pulling the stone out, yes, stone is being pulled out up here, with the intent that we will then use this, this, this stone for all of the things we need stone for, like making glass and sil so silicon and sand and all the things for all the processing up here. So we're using that as a priority over what's presumably coming out of a mine all the way over here. And so this, this this improves the efficiency of the system quite a bit because for one thing we don't need to ship all of this stone away but the stone is pulled out from the core processing and, and, and brought back into the system so we can actually use it rather than creating rather than having to dig up new stone so we don't have to transport it away but also it means that the uh, the, mine, the stone mine over here will also last longer okay it's eight million so it's going to last a long time anyway especially if it's being pulled out by oh it's being pulled out by green belts it's fairly quick um, but but it's got, it's got eight million it's going to last a decent amount of time but it's going to last even longer if we use the available stone from the uh, from the supply coming out from core mark, core processing as well, so you know it's all just about trying to keep the whole system running reasonably efficiently, use things up at the at a sensible rate. 
He says he's also cleaned out his storage of shame. And I noticed that because well, there's, a, there's actually still quite a lot of stuff in here. But he's made some big, big inroads on that. pulling Presumably pulling things out of here that aren't really needed anymore on this planet. And shoving them into the into the warehouse here to be put into the train. To be taken up to the ship and taken away to Norvis. And over on Norvis, this has led to... Well, it's, it's not really a bot frenzy at the moment. It's more sort of a bot drifting. Uh, but, the, but at one point when I looked at this before, we had uh, enormous quantities of uh, random stuff being unloaded here. But from the, uh, from the bigger train or from the bigger spaceship, being put into the purple chest here, and it was all streaming down to go into the chests of shame on Norvis uh, down here. And then there's a bit of sorting going on from here, so it's being taken again out of these out of these chests down here, and taken to slightly more sensible places. As it is, there's still quite a lot of stuff in here that could be put somewhere a bit more realistic. Like in here, we've got we've got yellow belts. We've got 8,000 yellow belts. Those should be taken away to be upgraded into better belts. Over here, we've got another 2,000 red belts. Again, that's exactly the same sort of problem. We've got a load of train batteries that should be taken up to orbit. We've got some barrels of light oil that, again, should be used up. We've got there's there's quite a lot of stuff in here that should be taken away and re and and put, and put somewhere a bit more sensible. There's even more light oil up here. There's loads loads and loads of it, and there's an entire chest full of it there. More red belts, and so a lot of this stuff. We will hopefully be dealing with taking it away, putting it into more sensible, more useful places. But at the moment, it's all just getting stored here, and well, it's it, it's building up and building up, and uh, but hopefully we'll deal with it all. Things like cryonite. Cryonite seems to be being taken away from here and put somewhere a bit more useful. I wonder where all these bots are going with it. They seem to be heading over down to this sort of area. So yes, it looks like yeah, there we go. We've got a blue chest over here that's requesting. It's requesting a relatively small amount of cryonite. I mean, this could be up at sort of twenty thousand or something like that. And then loads and loads of bots will be flying it over. In fact, if I do, let's demonstrate that. If I whack that up to a crazy number, then loads more of that's going to be brought over, and we and we'll see that very very quickly we're getting yeah we're getting now a lot more bots flying over here to pick up cryonite and bring it over. So this means there's a lot more load on the logistics system temporarily while we try and empty these chests out. But it means they'll be empty quicker. But again, we did. But the, the reason it was the way it was before is because you don't really care about exactly how long it takes to empty these chests. It's nice that they're being tidied up, but we don't mind if it takes ages for it to happen. And you can see there's loads more bots coming in from over here because they're uh, they're available, uh, so they're being dispatched over to come and get the cryonite as well. So it is it is gradually going to be brought over here and then unloaded into the train system until at least until this warehouse fills up, which is probably going to happen fairly soon. Uh, and then but then we can eventually use it up with this train. It'll take it away to wherever it's needed. The same can happen with various other things as well. There's over here. There's the same thing happening with Vulcanite as well, so we're bringing that over. It's getting gradually tidied up, and I imagine that over in the in the belt production area over here, yes, these are all green chests. So that means that over here we're asking for four thousand of them. If we ever actually make any more red chest, red belts from here, we'll presumably pass those through. And I hope would hope that this. Yeah, this inserter is set to only run when there's less than 8,000 of them in the network. If we can start making more belts up here, more and more and more and more belts, then we will start to churn through all those supplies we saw over there. It's just that we've had so many low-tier belts brought back from places like Big Red that we've got a huge backlog of them that we need to work through before we'll actually start making any more down here. Back over on Big Rid, well, it turns out I didn't actually read all the way through Mark's notes before I started talking. It turns out that uh, this area down here, the one that's making the uh, the Vitamalange stuff from from raw Vitamalange rather than from core chunks like this one up here, is actually is actually also brand new. So this is this is the uh, the Big Ridder of what the uh, of what this episode refers to. Uh, Mark has taken a copy of this processing system up here, which is running through the core fragments, and as we said, is running from all of the core mines around the entire planet. So it's going as fast as it possibly can at this point without us going out to another Vitamalange planet which seems like an awful lot of effort and so uh, and, and so that wasn't enough uh, this this supply coming out of here was was not enough and that's why Mark has now copied and pasted it down here so you'll see these two things look exactly the same including the offset with the um, the bio bio labs up here uh, everything is exactly the same here and here uh, except he's tweaked exactly how the pulverizers at the bottom run there's now half as many of them because they don't need to crush the core fragments and there's fewer output belts because again there's no core fragments being taken out so this is entirely new. He's put it therefore. He's probably put in these two mines uh, newly as well, uh, which means we've pulled in this. This patch has been used up quite quickly around the edges. We've pulled in from here, all the way into here already. Now there's still 25 million here, and that tends to be how these things work. The patches, the, the mines around the edge, run out very very quickly because the patches are sort of they're they're. they're 
conical, they're sort of mountainous. In the middle, you get much, much more vitamin land. If we look, for example, if we look here, we can see this, this drill is expected to, these drills are expected to produce 1.7, 1.8 million resources. The ones around the edge, even the ones that are running, they're only sort of half a million or 33,000 right, uh, around the edges. So you get, you get much more vitamin land or whatever the ore is in the middle and then much less around the edge. So you, so this means that when you put one of these mines down, you get a brief burst of really, really high production. Uh, which is nice to fill up, the, you fill up your warehouse, and then as the ones around the edge start to diminish, you then, the, the production rate drops off quite a lot, and you get down to, it. well, the steady state that we're at at the moment. But, you know, we've filled up the warehouse, we've now got it being produced faster than it's being, well, potentially being produced faster than it's being taken away, lots of these drills are yellow, so this is all okay, this, this is absolutely fine. But, so yes, this means that we now have twice as much vitamin land being produced, presumably, um, because we have the... The, the, well, up here, we're looking at the amount coming out here. We've got twice, we've got twice as many machines doing the bloom and the and the roasting stages. So I'm guessing there's there's potential for twice as much. However, looking at the way the belts are flowing in here, these are not backing up at all. So I suspect that means that this system up here is currently a little bit underutilized. It's it's running reasonably well, but you can see there's lots of red lights up here. We've only got sort of a, it's, it's only at about a third used at the moment. Maybe maybe half used. It's it's, it's certainly not being run at, at full speed. And you'll notice up here we've got a lot more coming in on these belts that come from the mine systems than on these belts that come from the, uh, the core mining system. However, that's not as bad as it sounds. This isn't necessarily massively overbuilt because as we do more research into mining productivity, that will increase the amount that comes out of the core mining drills. So we'll get quite a bit more bit being passed through from there. And then maybe with these, these machines along here will start to run a bit a bit more fat, a bit faster, a bit, a bit more uh, enthusiastically. We can also potentially upgrade these speed beacons down here to um, to higher levels and upgrade, and therefore upgrade the productivity beacons in here, and that'll get us more output for the amount of input that we're putting in, uh, potentially increasing the amount of uh, amount we get through. However, we do seem to be running okay at the moment. These vitamin lounge patches down here, there's there's 35 million left. Are there any more patches? There's more patches down here that could be tapped. There's a lot of vitamin land on this planet. There's more over here as well. We're not. I don't think we're going to run out. So this system is probably going to be okay. The main thing to keep an eye on is whether we're producing this vitalic reagent fast enough that we're that we can that we can fill up the stockpile, should we say? And it's kind of hard to tell because looking back over the last 50 hours, production and utilization or consumption have been very very similar numbers. So I think we've probably been limited by the amount we've been producing. We've had some problems in the past. You can see these dips down to zero production, uh, and we're still using it quite quite quickly. So right now 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 we are producing it at a steady 624 per minute, which seems like quite a good number, uh, but we're using it up at 391 per minute, but there are these spikes in here. And that makes me think that we're pulling in, as soon as a tra as soon as soon a spaceship arrives with some of this in, it gets slurped up, taken off to, maybe it's the bioscience, maybe it's the Naquium pr processing, I'm not sure, but we're getting these big spikes, and that makes me think that probably we are we have a lot of buffer filling to do before we, before we can, before everything settles down, and we can actually check to see whether we're producing it fast enough. Uh, whether we are actually producing it fast enough, I don't know. Um, over here, we can see that this this warehouse here is pretty full. Uh, there's a lot in it, but it is being taken away. It's about the same speed that it's coming in. I I don't know. We'll 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 have to just leave it running and find out how the system seems how how the system seems to be doing. I do notice actually that the these machines along here are not running flat out because the supply that comes in here is insufficient to keep all of them running. So this this where this warehouse is not filling up. So potentially that means we need even even more vitamin lounge processing. Um, which is pretty crazy given the amount we've got pouring in at the moment. Uh, over here, it looks like the supply from the mines is sufficient. These belts are not all running flat out. So we could get more coming out of the, this area by upgrading the speed modules or by putting in more processing machines. Uh, I guess that's probably going to be the way we will have to upgrade things if we decide we want to upgrade them. All of this expansion has meant that we now need more power over here. So Mark has put in more solar panels over in over over here. I, I can't tell you how much more of this is new, but more has been added. You can t the, the, the edge over here looks like it's still in the process of being built out. So I guess he's going to the uh, going to the left, going out west with them as he's building up more. But yes, more was required, so more has been provided. And you know what? I think that might be enough talking about Big Rid for now. 
back over in Norbit. Various bits of tweaking and improving of, of things have been done. So uh, I put in the additional uh, rows of uh, plasma generation over here, which uh, we're going, which I thought were going to be required for the ion stream generation here. However, we've been using so little deep space science that we've been using so little ion stream that actually it, it hasn't been all that useful. If we look at these machines, they've oh, they've run sort of 200 times each. So that's that is uh, at least several. Whereas these machines up at the top, these have run 2,000 times each. So yeah, they've, they, these ones have been running a lot longer and they've been running a lot more. But these ones at the bottom don't seem to have been completely useless. Um, we've, we have we have had a bit of, bit of out, output from them. Except for these ones right on the end which have only run six times. Hmm. I wonder if there's a problem with the piping. No, this pipe looks pretty good and then it links through up here and goes in here. We don't have any sort of prioritization set up along here. We've just got all of these machines trying to feed their plasma stream out into these ion stream machines along here. And as you can see, this this the, the ion stream is completely full and oh where where is it that we make all the where we oh, yes, it's down here that we use all that ion stream up. It's it's just not running because we're not using any Deep Space Science One catalogues because currently we're not doing any research. So we talked about this yesterday. Uh, these researches aren't capable of running at the moment. I think I came over here and I kicked this one back in again, just in order to get the science machines running a bit and, you know, doing things. But this is a brief glimpse behind the curtain. Yes, I have reloaded in between uh, making the two videos because I made them on different days and didn't bother to save. Over in Space Module City, uh, I, I came in and I discovered that there were problems with the speed module production. And it turned out that this was because, well, someone, and I think it was Mark, had come in and um, upgrade and made, made some changes to, the, to how these, uh, the, these machines are fed. So originally, I had this system up here where you can see we're bringing in a belt to each machine where it brings along the uh, the catalogs for that particular type of module and also the um, intermediate that's required to make that one. So along here, for, for example, for efficiency 5, we're bringing in, I think that's energy science, catalog 1 and holmium cables. Those are brought into here. They're churned through and it makes the modules. Uh, We've been using, Mark, no, I say we, Mark has been using obscene numbers of speed modules and the system was not capable of keeping up with those. So he came in and he put some additional belts in as an upgrade. So now we've got an entire belt of catalogues being brought in, uh, which doesn't really matter because you don't get, don't get through so many of those. But that important, rather more importantly, that means that there is now room to have an entire belt full of the intermediates being brought in as well. So iridium bearings in this particular case, for example. And so that means that they can then be brought in much, much more quickly. However, as, and in the process of doing this, he's, he's uh, initially set these, these belts to not be used because he wants to pull in all the catalogues off the first belt so that then at some point we'll eventually get all of the, the, the intermediates flowing along there as well. And that makes perfect sense. It's, it's sort of in, in, in progress. We want to pull in all of those catalogues first before we start pulling or just pulling in catalogues from here because that'll get rid of these and then we can start pl pl plowing in with much more quickly with these ones. As you can see, that's happened here with the bearings. The bearings have now, we've pulled in all of the catalogues that were on the top row, and so now we've just got a solid belt of bearings coming in here. And we would have a solid belt of girders coming in here if we had any iridium to make more girders. However, a mistake was made, and both of these loaders were pointing upwards like that, and that meant none of the um, none of the tier six modules were being made. So I came over here, I worked out what he'd been doing, and uh, and, and and fixed that. So now we we have speed module sixes once again, and that means we can start doing the ludicrous upgrades we're doing around some various parts of the factory. Last week, I talked about how we're now making particle stream in two places. So down here, we've got the new system, which is making particle stream from the uh, from the bacon data and making it. And this is this is much much cheaper. I, as I, I did the maths, it turns out it's about a sixth of the cost of making it the old-fashioned way. And that's being brought from here up to a, up to a station. Is it you? No, your blue clouds, your green clouds, your pink clouds. It's being brought up here to this station, where it can then be pumped into trains. The trains will take it away. However. It's also being made the old-fashioned way over here, where we're turning um, particles. No, we're turning plasma into particle stream, uh, and and this is much much more expensive. But we are still filling the station over here up because it was already here. The system was there. I thought let's use this as a backup. It makes a certain amount of sense. And so I um I thought okay. So the th theory was that the trains will always go to over here to pick up their particle stream if it's available. But if it's not available over there, then there's always then there's a backup over here. At first I thought that was going to be fine because all the particle stream was getting taken over to here for the deep space science and therefore it would be the closest station and the train would just rattle backwards and forwards unless there was a shortage over here, in which case the train could go over here to get some. However, it turns out there's quite a few other places that use particle stream. It's also being used over here for the material science. I think it's been brought over... I don't actually know it's not being brought over to here, but it is being brought up into the science area up here. Maybe for blue science, uh, astro science as well. It's being used in other places as well and lots of those places are closer to this one. So, I've now set up a prioritisation system. Over here, we're watching the amount of particle stream in these tanks and then triggering the uh, train limits to only be active, only call a train if there's more than 80,000 in the tanks. Great. Then, I'm also passing the signal out onto these, onto the uh, red cable over here. So we've got 400,000 almost particle stream being passed out onto this cable. If we then move over to here again, 
and have a look at this station. The update I made in the last stream is that we're now pulling that, that signal in along here. So we've got that 399,000 particle stream coming in along here. Being passed through an isolator here. This is just adding zero and then passing it over here. Uh, and then we've got we've got the same system over here. If there's more than 60,000 in the tanks here, then we then we output an L for the, uh, for the train limit. And so we're still setting the train limit to one. So we've got that. But we're also only enabling the station if we see less than 80,000 particle stream coming in on that signal from elsewhere. So that the particle stream signal from here is not being passed through this um, combinator. So this one is only outputting an L. It's not outputting the 399,000. So this one is only getting the 399,000 from the other station. And so this one did that. And so that means that this station will only be activated if there is less than 80,000 particle stream in the other station. So with that and the train limit, a train will only ever come to this station if the other one is nearly empty and this one has enough for a train to pick up from it. So as long as we're picking, as long as we're producing the plasma stream quickly enough over here in the in the in the new area, we'll never pick up any from over here. The train will always come to this one because that station will be disabled. The same logic applies to the train that we had before, where it's going to go to particle stream pickup. This is the new one if it possibly can. But if that station's been disabled because it's run out, then it'll go to the low priority one if that one's available. And if it can't, uh, and so it'll go to It'll go to one station or the other. It'll only ever go to both of them if it's taken the very last part, or if it's taken the last particle stream out of this one and dropped it below the threshold, so this one activates. And that's enough of an edge case that I don't mind if it goes there because it will. It'll go there briefly. It'll stop and it'll go. Oh, I'm already full, and then it'll go off to here. So. And by which time, hopefully, this one will have filled up again. So I'm expecting it... I don't expect that to ever happen. It's a weird corner case that shouldn't happen as long as we keep it being produced quickly enough in the new area. But if it does happen, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to cause a problem except for a little bit of extra train, uh, train network congestion and usage. Down on Njord, Tristan has drastically expanded his hydrogen chloride production because that was the limiting factor on his on his making of holmium, and we are well, we were very very short of holmium. I have to admit, I'm not certain whether we still are or not, whether it's whether it's been fixed or now, or whether we are still short of holmium. I should probably look at that. Uh, but anyway, he's he's, incre he's massively increased the amount of holmium chloride that's being produced. I think that's by upgrading. What have we got here? We've got yes, yeah, so we've gone from an electrolysis plant and a normal chemical plant to electrolysis plant and advanced chemical plants. So these ones are much much faster and contain. Take more productivity modules, so these are able to produce significantly more than these ones were. So this is now this system is now running a lot faster, a lot more powerfully. It's getting through huge quantities of sand, and I notice that that is the limiting factor for the system at the moment. I don't know whether he actually has enough um, hydrogen chloride. This this pipe is full, so I'm going to guess that he probably has. Um, and this tank over here is also full, so he does seem to have a decent amount of it available now. Uh, it looks like it is now a solved problem, but he's just filling up filling up the buffer in these in these pipes along here, filling up the buffer in this tank, and just trying to get it all topped off whilst also producing crazy crazy amounts of holmium down here. He's not producing holmium. Hmm, uh, that that's a bit weird. Uh, hmm. Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you sad? Is it? Oh, you don't have any of the uh, the blue beads coming in. That seems to be the problem. Yes, there's no blue beads coming in. So let's trace that one back up. Uh, but actually, let's let's briefly say. So he's upgraded the production of it over here. This is one of the things th that was um, messed up by the up the recent update that's changed a lot of the recipes around, particularly for things like electrolysis and um, and some of the chemically stuff. So yeah, the um, he's had to, he's had to come in and, and fix that because of the update. But now, why does he not have any blue beads? So those are supposed to come from across here. Well, he's only got these machines making them. I'm sure he's got more. Own, and some more make them over here but I guess this is another supply problem yes he's run out of plastic okay well I guess that's something that's brought in by the spaceship yes it is here it gets unloaded over here by this from the spaceship where what's the state of the spaceship been at the moment the spaceship is, spaceship is parked here okay so Tristan has run into he's run out of plastic he needs to upgrade the amount that's being asked for asked for so it'll all be brought over here and then the system will hopefully start to run a little bit more reliably this might go some ways to explaining why we don't seem to have any holmium anywhere at the moment he has also expanded the solar patch generation power up here in uh, in your bit because there well there wasn't enough of it basically again with the upgrades it's cre it's requiring large amounts more power generation to it in order to keep everything down on the ground running at the speed and power he wants it to be running at and so that means more solar panels up here it's an easy fix but it's one that you have to come out and, and do every so often down on Norvis, uh, Mark has apparently increased the amount of um, of uh, iridium girders we're making um, because we didn't have enough. Uh, it turns out the reason we don't have enough is because we don't have any iridium coming in. So that was probably more of a problem than the fact that we don't have enough machines. However, maybe we'll maybe we'll see some use in that in, in the future. So I guess that means um, another well, maybe another belt of um, of the ingots coming in here to be chopped up and, uh, and passed along here. I imagine that there's an extra. Yeah, these are all these belts are all marks. Um, these. The last three machines on the row are Mike's and the first three are Mark's. So what's so yeah, Mark has come in and he's doubled the number of machines along here. He's presumably 
Oh, oh yeah, again down here, he's doubled the number of machines down here. So he's essentially put in a second copy of what Mike originally built over here to make them twice as fast. However, the, the, uh, the, the rather severe shortage of Iridium is going to make that a little bit tricky. Mark has also finished removing the last traces of big oil, so that's why we have this enormous empty space in here, so much room for activities. Maybe we should make it into some sort of parkland. Uh, maybe we can put some bite. We can have some biters wandering around in here or something, something like that. Make it make it into a bit of a zoo. Uh, and then, and so that's now gone completely. There were a couple of stations left because we were trying to get rid of the last little bits of things like I think there's some petroleum gas, maybe some acid that we just needed to get rid of from here before we could completely dis dismantle it. But that's now gone. And he's also started building superior inserters, probably because people just kept talking about them. And he thought, well, if people are going to keep talking about them, we might as well have them and stop people complaining. Oh, there don't seem to be any of the basic short filter uh, superior inserters. I'm going to have to use a long one in a weird way or just use or, or use multiple stack inserts or whatever. <laughs> and so he's done this over here by all the belt production because, well, what's, what's the recipe for this like? Um... It takes in blue circuits, which we have here. It takes in iridium bearings, which again we have around here. Um, although how for how long, who knows? Immersive gear wheels, again, yes, those are around here. I was going to say they're around here somewhere. Um, I don't see where those are supposed to be coming from. It's got machines that make them. They come up here. Uh, they don't seem to be being split off from here. Yeah, I don't know how he's getting. Oh, maybe they're being summoned by. Someone by hit no. I don't know where these immersive gears are supposed to be coming from. Um, oh, down here. Yes, here we go. Down here. So there's a shortage of immersive gears being made on to go onto uh, this belt because we've run out of immersive plate on the input, uh, and those would then yeah they'd run up here and then come up here to be fed into the, into the machine up here. And then he's bringing in the uh, the the stack inserters by uh, logistics bot because um, well I guess they're being made a million miles away. I, I I know I'm a bit of a purist about this sort of thing, but I'm I'm struggling to care too much about that. So those are the those are the, we've now making the superior inserters over here. We've made 152 of them. Uh, there's 128 in there. So we've used yeah we've used about we've used a few of them already, but not a huge not in huge numbers yet. Speaking of, well, Immersite and the shortages that we saw over here, well, I went over to, I went and I had a look at Taras, and over on Taras, we have this system producing Immersite stuff, we've got the crystals, we've got the plates, they're being made at a rate, they're being passed through, it's not a very good rate though, we could do with quite a lot more being passed through than this, this is, this is, this is a little bit pathetic. So I took a look at this and I noted, well, okay, we're using tier, we're using low end beacons here, we've got, we've got tier, tier 2 speed modules in there, and tier, okay, tier 3 speed modules in here, this system over here, I feel is ripe for a bit of an upgrade, and we could make, we could make this a lot better. So I spent the second half of the, uh, of the last stream, building up this system in the uh, blueprint editor. And this is now, this is now much, much better. We've got, uh, as you can see, two green belts full of um, immersite. Uh, these are immersite core chunks coming in here, then being pulverized down. We've got the immersite ore, for want of a better word, coming out here, being pulverized again. The crushed immersite is then being, flowing through into here to be liquidized and then crystallized and platified around here as well. So I spent quite a lot of time designing this, and to be honest, I think this is not the best sort of content on a stream. I should probably try and st uh, steer away from this sort of thing, because I did notice the number of views went down. So clearly when I get really stuck into something like this, it's not quite as interesting. However, now this is the summary, so I can talk about this a little bit and, and just and gloss over the sort of the repetitive parts of me actually trying to squeeze things in and build them. So the first two steps of the system were pretty easy. You put, you drop down a beacon, and then you build a load of, you build a load of crushers around it, and you see how fast they run. You get stuff coming out of there. You do the same thing over here, pulverize it all again, and you go, okay, th this system isn't fast enough to keep up because of all the productivity modules, meaning that there's more than 100% of, of stuff coming out of here. So in that case, I'll put in another speed beacon down here and put in another two rows of it. And that means that I can then have the speed beacon affecting the machines down here that are pulverizing the core chunks. And that means that runs a little bit faster, which is quite nice. Down here, I've then done the standard thing of, of pulling out the iron from, from that's coming out from the core processing in order to make the barrels that are then required to take away the oil and the pyroflux that are in excess, and they can then that can then be fed onto the belt along here. So we'll take that away as well. We've got the water coming in here. We are using we're using the water from the core processing for the uh, for the growing trees here, but we're also generating infinite quantities of water over here. This system also requires mineral water and rare metals to be uh, passed in. It doesn't produce it doesn't produce enough of them from the core processing. So I've got again infinite supplies of those. But when we go in and put this on on the planet, I'll make Sure those are coming from somewhere sensible and then those will be prioritized up here to make sure that anything that's coming from again from that we're bringing the raw rare metals out from the core processing cooking that here and so we'll use that in preference over anything that comes in from anywhere else because this is just a nice steady stream of it and so the sand that comes out of the sand that pours out of this crushing is then passed along here and goes into the into the processing because, because we need a certain amount of quartz to do the processing of the MSI but there's far more stone coming out than we actually need so the excess is being sent off and there'll be a spaceship on the end of here to uh, to take the uh, take the sand away eventually rather than just an infinite dump and then after after doing these bits quite neatly, I then moved on to doing the the actual stages of make it of processing the immersite itself. And these 
Well, the machines are so fast, because you can use the advanced chemical plants and the advanced furnaces over here, they're so fast that I hardly needed any of these machines, especially with a uh, wide area beacon dropped in the middle. And I'm using wide area beacons too, because why not at this stage? So, at this point, rather than having these nice orderly lines uh, of, of production, it, the whole thing turned into a bit of a sort of a, let's see how much stuff we can cram in around a single beacon. So you'll notice that all these machines down here, and around the, around the top side here, they're all just in the edge of where the beacon can touch. So I've, I've pack the stuff in as much as possible and then things just got more and more complicated which is why it's turned into a bit of a plate of spaghetti in the middle uh, it's a little bit of a mess but it is running at the speed I wanted it to it's it's it's, it's churning through all of the um, all of the imasite that's coming in and then spitting out quite a lot of imasite crystals and imasite plates on the other side here uh, this wasn't actually fast enough to keep up with the input from here though, so I, I did a copy paste. We've now got two copies of this. Um, I suspect that it's actually more like one and a half copies. Perhaps if I put in another row here and then another however many rows of production processing here, then we'd be able to keep these two running slightly faster. But I think this is probably sufficient for now at least, and, um, and I think that's probably where I want to go to with it. This amount of output seems fairly sensible. So, as I say, I spent quite a long time. It was probably about a couple of hours, although some of that time was spent talking to chat and looking at things that other people have been doing and marvelling at whatever, uh, wherever Mike was trying to stick his Arcospheres today. Uh, so there were some, yeah, it wasn't quite a solid two hours of building this, but it did, t it did take a while to put it together. Rather frustratingly, just after I finished designing this, Mark chimed in with a, because he suddenly remembered that at some point in the past, he'd built this system, which is functionally it's functionally identical to the one I've been building so we, again we've got we're taking we're taking in the core chunks at the bottom here they're being pulverized down they're being they're being reprocessed to get the sand and the imasite cr the crushed imasite out which is then being liquefied and powdered and plated and over here it's being somewhere it's being crystal where's it being crystallized okay nowhere that makes me feel a bit better actually because over here he is not making it into the crystals this is only producing plates and that explains why over here we do seem to have quite a lot of plate coming through and a bit of a shortage of crystal. That makes me feel quite a lot better actually because that means I can put in my, my new system and maybe tweak mine to be a bit more crystal heavy and then we'll get we'll get a nice flow of the crystal coming out of there then and that will hopefully top up to the rate we seem to be trying to churn through it. Uh, notably you can see that both plate and crystal flowing through at the moment because we're short of both of them. Uh, however, however, Mark system over here is not running at full speed. It has one belt coming in here which is feeding just the first few banks of crushers along here and even those are not being fed fully because this belt isn't full we need more coming in along here we need we need basically we need more core mining we need the core mining to be tidied up sorted out make sure it's all going to the places that are uh, running with maximum productivity and maybe maybe go out and, and well almost certainly go out and get more of these core fragment uh, core mines set up so we have a lot more throughput and then we can then we can upgrade to having well all of this running, all of my system running, and maybe at some point we'll then demolish this one once we seem to have enough. I don't know, or maybe we'll, maybe we'll demolish this, and if so, we can then put in more of mine or more of Mark's, depending on the on the balance of crystal to plate that we seem to need. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the whole system needs a bit of tweaking and expansion and tidying up now as well. So there is still a lot more to be done over here, and a lot more of these mines to be tapped as well. And I think that's probably going to be a good point to end this video, although I have just noted how many cliffs there are on this planet. I think this is going to be a real pain to build up the uh, build build the belts out through or the rails out through, depending on which one I go for. But never mind, that's a problem for uh, for Monday. So yes, I will be returning on Monday with another stream with with the with the guys as usual, where yes, I shall be implementing this this uh, Emersite system that I built up, and then going out to expand uh, expand all the nonsense that's going on on this planet. And there will be other things to fix up as well, I'm sure. So we'll uh, we'll we'll keep going on those and, and keep things being built up. I'll be back then once again on Wednesday where I should be carrying on with the satisfactory streams, a bit more playthrough there. So last time I made lots and lots of interesting stuff out of the aluminium. I've made radio control units which seem to mostly be an intermediate for, uh, well, for other stuff. So next time I want to make supercomputers and carry on expanding the factory. This, the satisfactory must grow as they say. Thursday there will in fact be a video, another video this week. Yes, that's two Thursdays in a row. I'm uh, apparently on some sort of roll here so things are going well there so keep an eye out for that one. And then probably Friday and certainly Saturday and Sunday there will be more update videos like this one uh, about the K2SE playthrough. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that. There's always something happening on the channel and you don't want to miss out on any of it. So <laughs> thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.